All right, so uh, we are looking at lesson 1.4, perimeter and area in the coordinate plane. Now, this chapter is a little bit different as far as the index cards go that you're making for flashcards because there is not a vocab box on any of the pages in 1.4. Most of the words I'm having defined are within the section, but you might want to use a glossary. Um, there's also one that's a little bit different, which I'll talk to I'll talk about when I get to that point. So. We're talking about classifying and scattering polygons. We're talking about perimeters and we're talking about area of polygons. So first, what is a polygon? So you first learn this definition in elementary school, you covered again in sixth grade, but polygons. Uh, in geometry, a figure that lies in a plane is called a plane figure. Recall that a polygon is a closed plane figure formed by three or more line segments called sides. Each side intersects exactly two sides one at each vertex, so that no two sides with a common vertex are collinear. So in here, we have, again, examples on the diagram to show you. We're talking about polygon A, B, C, D, E. When you name a polygon, you can use all the vertices going around the figure. So A, B, C, D, and E are at our vertices. So those points can be used to name the polygon. And it doesn't matter what order you go in. It doesn't have to be alphabetical. It can be in any order that they appear, as long as you go either clockwise or counterclockwise around the figure. Now, they also give you an example of a side. So a side is going to be a uh, line segment. So they give you an example of line segment BC. Vertex D, which is a point. So all vertices are points. But there's many different types of polygons. So first thing, the number of sides in a polygon. So the number of sides determines the type of polygon as shown in the table. So in the table, you have starting with the smallest one. Three is a triangle, four quadrilateral, five pentagon, six hexagon, seven heptagon, eight octagon, nine nonagon, 10 decagon, 12 dodecagon, and then n-gon. Now, 11 is missing in here. 11 is an undecagon. Um, you should be familiar with the names of these because they will be used and you have to know what they are in order to do problems. So make sure you know those names. You can also name a polygon by using the term n-gon, where n is the number of sides. For instance, 14-gon is a polygon with 14 sides. So a hexagon could also be a 6-gon. Again, normally they use these names whenever they have a polygon with three through 12 sides. Now, you can also have two different types of polygons. We mostly deal with convex, but there is convex and concave. A polygon is convex when no line that contains a side of a polygon contains a point in the interior of the polygon. A polygon that is not convex is concave. So on here, they show you an example. Pretty much, I think of it as concave, all the angles point outwards, for concave, one of the angles is pointing inwards, or it's caved in. So in this diagram down here, you can see that one side is caved in. If I just did a basic, let's say, quadrilateral, all right, this would be convex, whereas this would be concave. So one of the sides looks like it's caved in. So concave, again, if one goes inwards, it's concave. If all of them point outwards, convex. Now, classify each polygon by the number of sides, tell whether it is concave or convex. So again, this is simply naming it. On the first one, you have four sides. So again, you go through, you can count your sides. You have one, two, oh, my pen's not working very good, three, four. Let me try a different pen. Um, but this works any better. Nope. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that works better. All right. Three, two, four. All right. I'll use this pen instead. So on this first one, there's four sides. So that would be a quadrilateral. All right. So the first one. Oh, I spoke too soon. Okay. I don't think either pen's going to work very good for this. The second one. 
Mm, no, it won't let me continue on the slides. Hold on. Technical difficulties. Mm. All right, I think that'll work now. All right, there we go. So for A, we have four sides, so it is a quadrilateral. On B, you have six sides. Again, you can count them up. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I'm not using a pen anymore. It's not working. But you have six sides, so it is a, uh, it is a hexagon. Now, it also asks about concave and convex. So the first one was caved in on one side, so it's concave. All these angles point outwards. It is uh, convex. So again, concave, going inwards with one of the angles, convex, all of them point out. Like I said, most of the ones we do are convex. The next thing, perimeter and area. So there's lots of formulas here that you should be familiar with. Now, do you have to know all of them? Um, yes and no. So. There is one formula on here that is given to you on your reference sheet. And that one formula is the formula for parallelogram. So we know this one formula is on the reference sheet. It equals base times height. Now, as far as the other ones go, some of these also can use that same formula for a, for a parallelogram. That formula applies to a rectangle. So you could say base times height here instead of length times width. Same thing for a square. You could also say base times height on this one. So that also works for a square. Whereas then a triangle is one half base times height. Think of it as a rectangle with half of it missing. Any way you drew a rectangle, if you drew a diagonal going through a rectangle, you'd be cutting it in half. So it's exactly half the area. You'd have the same height, same base, but it'd be half the amount of area. So it's a big difference here. Area is going to be the amount of space an object takes up um, on a two-dimensional plane, whereas for perimeter, it is the distance around a figure. Now, you can just add up all the sides as well for perimeter, so you don't have to use these formulas in order to do perimeter. Again, it is just adding up all of the outside lengths so you get the distance around the figure. Again, these formulas could help you out though, so you might wanna write them down somewhere so that you have them to use. Example two, finding perimeter in a coordinate plane. So find the perimeter of triangle DEF with vertices at, and they give you three points there, D, E, and F. Right. So we're going to plot those points. Is our coordinate plane, plot three points. So we have D at one, three, E at four, negative three, and F at negative four, negative three. So we have our triangle. Now, in order to find the perimeter, you're gonna find the distance for each one of those lines. So you can do the distance formula. So for DE, we're gonna plug in our two values for our distance formula at D and E. Plug in both x values, plug in both y values. So similar to what we did in the last chapter. All right, plug it all in, simplify it, and we should get square root of 45. Now, the next part, well, EF, this one is a horizontal line. So you can do this like we did in the first chapter with the ruler postulate. Or if you want to just count the length, that's fine too. But you have negative four and four. So again, subtract it, find the difference and then it becomes a positive. So we have negative eight, and that becomes a positive eight. The last side, FD, similar to the first one, you have two coordinates that you can plug into your distance formula. So label one as X1, Y1, one as X2, Y2, plug it in, substitute the values, simplify it, and you should get square root of 61. Now, once you have those three sides, we need to add them all together. So we have those three values, add them up. So I'd change these to decimals first and then add them if you want to plug them into the calculator. 
just like that. Some calculators will allow you to do that. Others, you have to change it to a decimal first and then add them. I always recommend having a few extra decimals before getting to the very end. So on this one, they rounded off to two decimal places. I would recommend having three or four decimals when you plug those values into the calculator. So again, keep as many as possible. You have less rounding error. But the perimeter of this one is approximately 22.52. The next one was find the area in a coordinate plane. So we have the area of JKLM. So they gave us four vertices. So we're dealing with a quadrilateral. Once we draw it, then we can see what shape we have. So just reading it, it's hard to tell that it's actually a parallelogram. But once you have the points on the graph, then we can see, all right, we are dealing with a parallelogram. Now that we have a parallelogram, we are going to use our formula, base times height. So What's our base? Well, we just need to use our ruler postulate. We could count the distance. We could subtract the two values, how you want to do that. But again, just counting the distance would be fine. So from here, we can see the distance is four. So if you did that, instead of plugging the numbers in, that's fine. Now, the height, same thing. Anytime we're talking base and height, we're looking at perpendicular distance. So Height going straight up. This is the length we're looking for. So from here down to here, again, we can just count it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And say, all right, the height's going to be six. If you want to use the points, you can do the points as well. But now we have four, we have six. Those are two values we're plugging into our formula. So our formula, base times height. Four times six, which is going to give us 24. Now, our area should always be in square units. So if there's units attached to this, we have 24 square units. On the other one with perimeter, it's just regular units. So, and it's a distance, so they should not have any type of square or anything like that on the units. All right, on this one, last example, you're building a shed in your backyard. The diagram shows four vertices of the shed floor. Each unit in the coordinate plane represents one foot find the perimeter and area of the shed floor. So on here, we need to understand what we're looking for first. We have a rectangle. We're finding the area and the perimeter of this rectangle. So we need to know, all right, if we're finding area and perimeter, what are we gonna to need to use? Well, we're gonna to need to use our formulas for um, area of a rectangle and perimeter of a rectangle. So first, find the length and width of this rectangle. So looking at the rectangle, we can use our ruler postulate and subtract the lengths. So we have eight on one point and two on the other point for our X values. We subtract those, we get a distance of six. For the Ys, going for our height, we have seven and two for our Y values. So again, subtract, find that distance is five. You could have also counted your distance. So on here, again, same thing. This distance is five. This distance is six. So we have a base of six and a height of five, or you can call it length and width, both work. So the shed has a length of six and a width of five. Now we're plugging into our formulas. All right. These are the formulas that they used. We can substitute them in, we can evaluate them, and we get our answer of 22 feet for our perimeter and 30 square feet for our area. Now, we could have also, for the perimeter, we just added up all the sides. So you had six, six, five, and five, add them all up, you still get 22. But either way, you get the same answer. All right, that is it for that lesson. So again, that was 1.4. Um, make sure you have your index cards done for tomorrow, and I'll see you in class.